A few weeks ago, I did an installation video and I said, hey, we're not going to show you how to take off the floorboard in this video because I've already done it. Boy, it wasn't long till you guys said, hold it, I went back to that other video and you said the same thing in that video. Yeah, I just was trying to put that off, I don't know. Well, I can't put it off anymore. Johnny's just about to find a new home. And so, if I'm going to show you how to remove the floorboard off of a 2014 to 2017 1025R, it's got to be today. So let's get to it. I want to start right up here at the side panels for the hood. Now, this is different on the 2014 model than the 2018 model. They're bolts on the 2014 model. The 2018 model has uh, nice little yellow, I don't know, connectors of some sort that just kind of squeeze in there and uh, latch. And they're just a lot easier to deal with than the bolts. I'll put a part number for that in the description. And my understanding from looking to greentractortalk.com, and as I've mentioned before, a great place to go to find information like this. Folks are saying you can simply buy those little clips and replace these bolts directly. Some other folks, like ET Call Home, suggest that you don't put anything in here. You just leave it empty. No use to have any bolt or anything. He's right, it's not gonna go anywhere. I guess I just, I have so much rattling already going on in here. One of the disadvantages of this engine is that it rattles at low RPM, just shakes. And so uh, I guess I was always just wanting to make sure that I could reduce the rattling as much as possible, but it's not gonna fall off, so maybe there's no problem. Okay, for this project, you're gonna have several different sets of bolts and nuts that you need to keep track of. So get several small containers. I've got these small red bins for this one. I actually prefer the little free magnetic hardware holders that you get from Harbor Freight. You just drop your bolt or nut in there and it sticks right there. You don't have to worry about it going away. But, <laughs> I just moved. I can't find anything. I did find these red bins though. That's good enough. So that's the bolt from the hood. The hood just slides straight backwards and comes off. And yeah, sometimes it doesn't look so great. We'll do the same thing on the other side and get back to you. Okay, the next step is to take this panel right here off. It's sitting on top of the floorboard, so it has to come off. Now there's four screws on this model, two in the back and one on each side that hold this down. This is one of the differences with the 2018 model, and I can't tell you any more than that right now, but I'll be able to in a few weeks. The two screws on the sides have washers on them. The screws in the back don't. So that screw does not have a washer. I suppose one could use a drill for this, but I'm always nervous about stripping threads, especially when I'm going back on. So again, a washer on the side ones, no washer on the back ones. This guy's ready to come off. Now sometimes it binds up a little bit on the rubber mat on the 1025R. That little rubber mat does not come on the 1023E, so it shouldn't be a problem for you guys. Okay, the next step is to remove this handle here. This is the three-point flow control to adjust how fast the three-point goes up and down. Notice it's gone on mine. Well. I'd like to say it's because I just took it off before I turned the camera on. That's not the case. The last time we put this back on, we tightened it with an Allen wrench and we tightened it too tight and stripped the threads. So be careful with this. This is an Allen screw that goes right down in that knob. And if you tighten it too tight against here, you'll, you'll strip it. So I need to get a new one of those. The other thing that I have to take off here is Ken's differential lock pedal. If you don't have one of these differential lock pedals, get it. It's small. But that's actually good because it's out of the way, but your heel can easily find that when you really need it. Okay, next we have to take this piece off right here. Now it slides under one of these other plastic pieces, so it has to be pulled off under that. Oh, one more knob we need to take off is the mower height control knob. There's no set screw on it, so it can just come right off. Okay, so again, this is a 10 millimeter bolt. Got real big broad flat washers on it to make sure it covers these slots. There are also a couple of screws right down in here that need to be removed. So one screw on each side. 
And then, this guy should be ready to come out, I believe. Items like this, a lot of times you just keep working them around and you'll eventually get them off of the all the different things they're hanging on to. But if you're having trouble, don't pull too hard on something like that. Just double check to make sure that you've got all the bolts out of it. So in this case, there's two up here, two down here. I would typically use my air compressor to get the dirt out of these bolt holes here. Can you believe I don't even have my air compressor hooked up yet? The air compressor, one of them is setting over there. That wouldn't be any issue, but I don't see any hose. I'm not actually sure where the hose reel is. I wonder how long it'll take. A year? I don't know. I'll just use my built-in air compressor. Okay, good enough. Okay, these are 15 millimeter bolts. You guys have often asked why I don't use an impact wrench. Well, I do when I'm off camera. The main reason is because of the noise when we're on camera. Each of these bolts has got a collar on it and a large washer. Now, there are four of these bolts on each side of the tractor. You have to take all four of them out. The good news is we're almost there. What well, has Tim forgotten now? Ah, two more bolts. Five on each side. Okay, once you have all five of those bolts removed, this just comes right up. Oh, I'm gonna show you something on this side. These two little hoses belong right in here. But during this disassembly process, you have to take them out of there. They're tucked right into a slot in the floorboard. Okay, there it is. Just after I took it off. Hey, look how well greased that looks. Proud of myself. These are the wires for the diverter kit. And I put an extra piece of rubber protectant on that since I was going right over that frame. I was a little concerned that they might rub there. And this, you can tell that's darker and newer. This is the harness that came with the TKV20 material collection system. After Christy did such a good job putting that on, look how nice she did. Here I am just going through and clipping it right off. Johnny's a good tractor. He's been a lot of fun. My goodness, he's done a lot of work. <laughs> Some people say I've been pretty rough on him, and you know, I haven't been easy on him, I know, but I don't think there's any damage. None that I know of, other than maybe some paint scuffs. I did have some of those. Now this is where I got the power for the Artillion Diverter Kit, right out of the main fuse block here. Okay. Only the hardest one left. I'm thinking maybe I can get this through here a little better by lubing it up a little bit with some WD-40. I've got the Trigger Pro version here. I think I'll spray a little on the underside. My dad always said if a little does a little good, a lot will do a lot of good. Maybe that'll make that slicker. You saw how much struggle I was having before. Wow. Much easier. Slid right out. Okay, so there's the tip of the day. Lube that up with a little WD-40 and it comes right on out. Okay, before I put the floorboard back on, I, I wanted to take a little time to show you how this mower lift mechanism works. I actually have a reason for this. I, I think some people don't understand mechanically how it works, and therefore they may fight with it more than they really need to. So, if you can see right down in there, I'll point the screwdriver 
I'll point my screwdriver, see the tip of my screwdriver right there, I'll point it down here. Notice how this thing looks like a, a screw as I turn it. Well, this is the lock, and I'm in the lock position right here now. You'll see the, the lock right down there where I pointed at, but this big lever here hinges on this point, on this rod right here. So when you lift the mower up, this behind this hinge goes down. When you let the mower down, behind this hinge comes up. What this lock does is keep it from coming up any further than you allow it. So when you've got it on this position right here, notice that's when the screw is in its lowest position right there, then the mower is fully locked up and will not go down at all. But as you turn it to the left here, you can see those notches which correspond with the numbers on your dial, allow it to go lower and lower and lower. Now, I keep turning it around, and there is one slot right here. Big wide slot. Now that slot is the install position, so when you have it in there, it allows the mower to go all the way to the ground. So that's why you have the install position, the lock position, and then all the different heights. That's how that works. Now another reason I bring this up is because just, I don't know, a couple months ago, our lever got to binding so bad that we couldn't turn it. Christy couldn't turn it at all and it took me both hands. So one day I got so frustrated that I said, I'm at least gonna try to squirt some WD-40 down in there. So I chose the WD-40 with the Easy Reach straw and I was able to go right down through the hole and get some lube right around here. Now I've got the, got the lid all off now so you can actually see it, but when you're working with the floorboard on, it's pretty hard to get to that. But now, I mean that's all I did to this was, was shoot a little WD-40 in it and I can move it with one or two fingers. I'll tell you what, before you get too concerned about something that's binding and afraid you're gonna have to replace something, fix something, make sure you at least try a little WD-40 original formula. Okay, I hope that helps explain the mower lift mechanism. One other aspect to this is, if you see how this works, anytime you have the mower down against the stop, you're not gonna be able to turn this at all. You have to have the mower lifted all the way up uh, to be able to turn this. It turns freely after you have the mower up, assuming it's a, a suitably lubricated there. Okay, I think it's time to go back together here. Try to get these two lines. These are fuel lines, by the way. Tuck them right up under here in that hole they came out of. Little slot made right for them there. I have to make sure that the differential lot goes over the top of the floorboard. It would have been nice if I had cleaned out those holes a little bit. Might have even been worth it to have found the air compressor hose. But hey! If you see somebody else doing shoddy work, it makes you feel good about yourself, right? So you guys can feel good about how good you do instead of doing shoddy work like I'm doing here, right? Okay, when I took this off, the rubber padding came off, so I'll put it back on. Again, these are unique to the 1025R. The 1023E does not have them. It's one of those little creature comforts that probably isn't worth too much, but it's nice to have. It takes out a little bit of the vibration. Now I've had this floorboard off, I don't know, five, six, seven times. It's not really that big of a deal. And the only times I've uh, been frustrated is when I haven't taken it off. I think I showed you that in the Terra King TKB20 episode. We resisted taking the floorboard off for a long time and then when we finally took it off it made everything easy. So it's not that big of a deal guys and it really does help you to get to essentially all of the tractor when you take that floorboard off. It's always a good idea to grease your universal joints. The one in here, the one back here while you have the floorboard off. You've seen me grease these universals so many times, I didn't think you'd care to see that. I like to put in all of the bolts before I tighten any down. That way if you need to move it around just a little bit to get the bolts to fit into their hole, it's a lot easier to do so. It's also something my dad taught me. You always put in all of the bolts before you tighten any. Now that's not like all of the bolts on the entire 
project, it's the, all the bolts of a given component. So I actually think this piece is one of the more difficult to get on. Uh, you need to be holding down the differential lock pedal. And you also need to make sure you're getting over the mower height control lever. And these, I'll take it off again. These two pieces of plastic need to come up and you need to go under that. I'll probably knock the camera off because this is kind of frustrating, but I have to go under that and under the one on the other side. See that? Down here and then grab that differential lock pedal and then go down. Look at that. Don't you like it when a plan comes together? Now see how that little horseshoe hooks right in there? Look at that. It's working like a champ. Not bad for four years old. You might not have been able to see it over here on this side, but uh, I had to again hold the differential lock pedal down and push it down a little bit to get that screw started. As usual, I won't tighten it all the way up. This side over here will probably be similar. Oh, there it goes. Well, okay, I think that's all four of the fasteners. The two screws down here and the two bolts, so I go ahead and tighten this one. The reason I put my finger there is to keep it from spinning loosely the other direction. So it allows the ratchet to work. I sort of, I allow it to turn to the right and then I kind of hold it from turning to the left. I know that's basic discussion, but some of you might not be familiar with working with sockets and ratchets. I should take a moment here to talk about my seat springs. Yeah, they're just laying in here at this point. All models of the 1026R and 1025R up to 2017, which have the backhoe option, have a swivel seat. It spins all the way around. You pick up this lever right here, it allows you to spin the seat. You've seen me do that repeatedly in our videos. Now up until 2015 or 16, I believe it was 16, these seats have a turnbuckle mechanism under them that is very weak. It's just gonna break. Well. Mine broke twice or three times. I finally stopped fixing it. So because that turnbuckle is not attached, this is allowed to bounce. And when it bounces, apparently it bounced hard enough, this is on the road when it's on the trailer, to detach the springs and the spring holders. So really what I need to do is take this seat apart and reattach those springs. But I may leave that for the guys at Goodworks Tractor. That wouldn't be very kind, would it? No, seriously, I've already discussed it with him and he said, no problem, I'll take care of it. I'm pretty impressed with Courtney at Goodworks Tractor. Maybe you ought to give him a call, trade off your Johnny, or get your first Johnny. So anyway, that's why you see the seat springs stuck like this. One of them came off and then I still put it off and didn't do anything, and, and then the other one came off. I should have got to this when I first saw that it was, uh, the seat was broken, and then both of the seat springs would have been intact. Would, you know, it wouldn't have been hard to fix. I just was kind of lazy. And it happened during the heat of summer last year when I was working really hard on projects. And I just kept saying, oh, I'll get to it next week, get to it next week. Well, yeah, next week never came, did it? Time to put this shield back on. One thing to verify here is make sure your hoses are in that little slot. And just as a reminder, if you have a newer tractor, the 18 model, you will not have this quite done the same way. And you'll have to look for a later video from us where we'll show you how to handle this aspect of the floorboard removal on the newer tractors. I'm afraid it's not going to be as easy, I, but maybe, maybe I'm just being pessimistic. Hopefully it won't be any harder than this. Now I need to find my little red bin. The bolts with washers are on the sides. The bolts without washers are in the rear. Okay, sometimes putting these panels back on is a little tricky. So let's analyze how the tabs are made here. They're vertical, so they've got to go in a wide part of the slot. So there's the wide part, and then they slide forward into the narrow part. Same thing back here. So they're gonna start, we're gonna go in and forward. I want to make sure I catch the back ones, but I don't want to put for push forward yet because I've got to catch those bottom two. I have trouble getting them sometimes both at the same time. There we go. Make sure that you got it attached front and back. Use your bolt. 
or your little quick connector that we talked about earlier. These are lot nuts, so it'll take a little effort to tighten up. I can hear ET call home now saying, that's a waste of your time, Tim. Reminder, check out greentractortalk.com. There's so much more wisdom there than what uh, you'll ever see on this channel. <laughs> okay, while I'm getting this panel on, why don't you guys subscribe to our channel if you haven't? You take the time to do that. I'd really appreciate it. Take a look at our website, tractortimewithtim.com. And you know what? Be watching. It won't be long till new Johnny is here. We really appreciate you watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. Folks, I've seen a lot of questions in the comments section of our videos about my toolbox, exactly how I mounted it on the side of the tractor like this. I keep thinking I'm gonna get around to a video and then I keep putting it off, I forget it. You know how it goes. Um, but today's the day. 